I'm back again with another quick DIY tutorial. Today, we are learning how to do wall panels. So we've actually done these wall panels in three separate spaces. We've done them as a headboard, we've done them in our kids space, and now we've done them in a dinette. I absolutely love them. I love the look. I'm going to show you what we did for all three of those panels, the different materials we used, and the best, absolute best way to do it. Okay, let's jump into the tutorial. We're gonna go through all three panel types, but I'm gonna start by showing you what we did for the panels on our headboard in the RV. So these are the materials we're using to do the panels. We have the foam here that will go right directly on these plywood boards. And then we have the batting, which we have to kind of wrap around the edges and keep the corners and edges all kind of rounded and nice. And then this is the vinyl that will go on the top of the panels. And then one of the best products for putting these panels on the wall is these clips. They're super affordable. We will link them in the description below, but they will make putting your panels on the wall really easy. We started by cutting our half inch plywood boards down to size using a table saw and miter saw. We figured out the width we wanted and the length by measuring our headboard area and then divided the total width by five because we wanted five panels. Next, we put our foam on top of the plywood and cut the foam down to approximately the same size as the plywood panel. We wanted to cut our vinyl down to size and we determined the size of our vinyl by taking the full size of our plywood panel and adding two and a half inches to each side. So if our plywood board, for example, was 10 inches by 30 inches, we would have cut our vinyl down to 15 inches by 35 inches. And then we cut our batting down to the same height and width as our vinyl piece. The reason we leave a little bit extra on each side is because it will be folded over and stapled to the back of each panel. Now that all the materials are prepped, we can get ready to hang the clips on the wall where the panels will sit. We used four clips for each panel to make sure that they were really securely in place. We held the board in place exactly where we wanted it to sit and then drilled four holes through the plywood and into the wall behind. Make sure to double check there's no electrical or HVAC or anything behind the wall where you're drilling. We drilled two holes near the top and two holes near the bottom, making sure we had a couple of inches on each side to staple material afterward. Your holes will be perfectly aligned with the holes on the wall, but make sure when you remove the board to mark which side of your board is up and which side is the back. Because we were drilling into hardboard walls and not drywall or studs, we did come across one little problem where the clips weren't clicking, and here's how we solved that problem. Okay, so came up with a really easy solution. This is just 1 8 um, hardboard, and we made little spacers. These are pushing the clips out away from the wall, and now, we take this, click, click. Nope, missed. And you go like that, and I heard it click, and it's good. Yeah. The big issue we figured is because this is not like a stable background, and so it was pushing in and then not allowing our clips to like click. And once, together. once the clips grab, they grab hard. It's just yeah. So that's all. That's a pretty minor, yeah, easy solution. So. I mean, it looks really good. Yeah, so. it looks great. Now that you know where all of your clips are going, you can screw the backer piece to the wall with the hardboard spacer in place if you need it. 
Now we can move on to our fabric panel. And the first thing we wanted to do was secure that foam piece onto the plywood so it wouldn't move anywhere. And we did that with a spray adhesive that we will link in the description. Three. Two and a half. Two and a half. Now that everything is centered, we can start stapling our fabric to the back of the panel. We started by stapling down the long edges, making sure to pull the batting and the vinyl tight on either side of the staple gun as we stapled along. And don't staple too close to the corners yet because you wanna have some room for that fabric to move around still. Now we can move on to stapling the top edge and the corners on one side. We like to put a couple staples on that short end and then leave some room at the corner again so we have room to play around with the corner fabric. I think genuinely the hardest part of this whole process is getting really nice corners, but here's the best way we have found to do it. We start by cutting out all of the excess material so you'll have some excess batting that has built up and then we like to cut out some of the excess in our case, vinyl material as well, or whatever material you're using for your panel cover. Then we gently flatten and kind of fan out the remaining corner material and staple it down in place. And then we'll follow the same process for the other three corners on the panel. When your corners are done, you can place your clips into the four holes that were previously created and screw them down to the panel. The next wall panels I wanted to show you are the ones in the dining space in our RV. Because these ones are kind of floating on the wall and because they're quite thin, they presented a couple of unique challenges that I'll show you here. We have all our pads for the base done and so the next step is to make a bit of a backing or a pad for where we lean against. Um, for the height of that, this window is going to decide where these are going to sit. Um, and then we just try to make kind of an even gap between the foam seat cushion and then the wall in here to kind of make these even looking. So that ended up being a six inch panel. Um, and then we want to make sure this panel is the same height all around. So how I figured that out is I just put the panel up against the window and then I made these blocks and that is going to be our height around the back cushion. And then if I just use these blocks when I'm setting everything, it will be consistent throughout the whole little dinette area. The way we're going to mount these panels to the wall is these um, panel clips. And they click together and then you can attach these without using any hardware and take them off if you need to. So it's actually a really slick system. Um, we're going to try and get them close. So I have um, structure here and I have structure here and nothing in the middle. So we'll try and kind of install it close to the um, two by four supports in the wall or two by two supports in the wall. And then we should be good to go to start upholstery. No. <laughs> Oop, could have been banned. Similar to our headboard paneled walls, we started by drilling holes through our wooden panel piece so that we knew where the clips would sit on the panel and on the wall. Thanks. 
Since I wanted these dining room panels to be really thin, there was another quick modification that we had to do. We got the clips installed. Um, the hardware that came with it and all the hardware I could find at the store that was this size of a head um, were half inch long. And because Lindy wants to make life difficult and have a very low profile panel, we ended up using a quarter inch plywood. So we have about an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch of screw sticking out. Um, this can be avoided if you just use a half inch or maybe even a 3 8 panel and you wouldn't have any screw coming out. You definitely want to deal with these screw heads because if you left them and because we're doing a fairly thin foam or thin padding on here, I think when you lean against this you could feel this and it would either poke your back or rip the upholstery work. So we need to either grind or sand these down. We did this with a grinder but if you have a Dremel at home that's another great tool for this job. The upholstery process for these thin wall panels was almost exactly the same. The only difference was in how we did the corners. And the reason we did the corners slightly differently is because it was just such a thin panel and we didn't want a big buildup of material on the corners. You can see in this clip that we just gently folded over the corner fabric like we were wrapping a gift. Then the panels clipped into place securely on the wall. And the last place that we added panels was in our children's secret place, which was what they called their space under the stairs that we made over for them. It was a small space, but we really wanted to put some cushioning on the walls for them to lean against while they were playing or reading. For these panels, we used a suede type of material, which was perfect for this cozy room. Other than the panel size being slightly different in this space, the process was exactly the same again. Here we are cutting out any of the excess material. And here's a little closer view of how we folded and stapled the corners, similarly to how we did the headboard earlier. And we'll show you this install as an example of what not to do. The first time we attempted to do the wall panels, we used construction adhesive and a couple reasons that this did not work very well was because one, it took so long for the construction adhesive to dry and two, with the thickness of the fabric behind the panel piece, oftentimes the construction adhesive just got flattened out and so it didn't have enough surface area between the wall and the panel to stick really nicely. We would highly recommend sticking to the clips in the earlier examples. Once again, here's all three of the wall paneling examples that we've done in our home. I can almost guarantee that we'll be doing this again because we just love the look and I always have loved the results. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that tutorial. If you have a favorite wall panel that I showed you or if you have any questions, please drop those in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a like and to subscribe so you don't miss out on more DIY and budget-friendly projects. Thank you so much for watching.